Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up the temperature controller STC100A. So this is what we're going to need. Uh, the temperature controller, uh, two outlets, this thing, a couple of these, maybe more than a couple, but probably a couple, not sure what these are called. Some tools, some wire, a three prong wire that's graded for 220 volts and the box. I built this box earlier and maybe I'll show you later how to build it. Electrical tape. So first of all let's connect this to the end of the wire. So I already unscrewed this. I like to do this this way it's easier. Let's strip the wire. Okay, now the blue wire is the negative wire, and the brown wire is the positive wire. And the green one, green yellow, is the ground. Okay, this is how it's supposed to look. Put the top on, back cover. You got to make sure all the wires and cables and connectors you're using are all graded for 10 amps or higher. Because this controller can only support 10 amps. If you try to put any more than 10 amps on it, it will probably will fry. So now that we have this connected up, we do the same for these two. I'm not going to show you how to do these. It's just the same. I'll be right back. Okay, so we got these two connected. Now I marked one of them with an H and one with a C, so that's that way we know where we're going to connect our heater and where we're going to connect our cooler. Just to make things easier. Now if you don't know how to do this, there are a lot of videos out there that will show you how to do it, so don't worry about it. But it's, yeah, just like that. So let's uh, take a look at our temperature controller here. Of course it comes with Chinese instructions which don't really do any good. Here's the temperature controller, STC100A, and here's the temperature sensor. We don't need that now. Okay, so there are seven connections into this device. Now, it's supposed to be used in a different way, only for heating or cooling. But the way we're going to set it up, it's going to be good for heating and cooling. So, and number one, this is goes for here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number one will be our cooling, uh, our cooling lead, our load, which is the brown wire of the cooling connection, is going to go into here. Over here, we're going to make a, create a bridge into the one before the last, which is where we get the power from, another brown wire. And, and the number three is going to be our heater, the brown wire, obviously, the load. Four and five are the temperature probe, the temperature sensor. It doesn't matter. You could put it in either way. And over here is going to be our power, our load, brown. And the last one is going to be our neutral for the power. We're going to connect all the neutrals together onto that. And the ground will go separately. Okay, so we're going to take all the wires, all the connections, and put them through the box. So if you're not using the box, just skip this step. But the heating outlet goes through this hole. Cooling goes through this hole. The temperature sensor goes with the little one in the middle. And eventually our connection to the power goes at the last hole. If you're not using the box, just ignore this. So we'll start off by connecting... 
the load of the cooler to connection number one. And make sure these are very tight and that the wire is not sticking out here. We'll do the same for our heating outlet. Connect it to connection number three, leaving the center one empty for now. Then, let's do the ground. Well, let's leave the ground on for later. Actually, let's do the ground now. So you want to take one of these, cut it off, <clears throat> be careful these edges might still be a little sharp. So you want to take the bo both of the ground connections twist them together and put them into one side of this electrical connector. Make sure that it's not sticking out and then tighten it. Okay, then we're going to take, well we'll leave this now for this. We'll take both of our neutral wires coming from the heater and the cooler and do the same thing. We're going to take another one of these twist the wires together and insert it into this electrical connector and tighten it up. It needs to be very tight so that it doesn't come out accidentally. Okay, now we have both our neutrals connected together and our grounds connected. What we're going to do now is take our power cord that's going to the outlet and we need to strip it. Okay, I'm going to cut off this. Okay, we're going to need another little piece of wire. Let's see if I have one. Oh, I have this. Eh, just something to go from number two to number six. A little bit more than what I have here. This should be about okay. To strip it. So this is going to be connected to number two which is where the main load comes from in this setup. Again, make sure it's very tight. Make sure that it's not sticking out. Now make sure you use a brown wire because you don't want to confuse someone who's later going to be looking at this not knowing which cord, which line has the load on it, which can be potentially dangerous. So now that we have that done, we will take our main load coming from the outlet together with the wire that we connected to connection number two, twist the two together 
and put them into number six. Make sure they're nice and tight in there. Now this is going to be connected to the outlet bringing power to the relay. The relay is going to flip between pin between connection number one and number three. That's where we have our cooler connected to number one and our heater connected to number three. Then you're going to need another piece, a little piece of blue wire, which is neutral. Just a little piece will do. Take this much. Strip it. And you want to put the neutral wire in to connection number seven. That is where all our neutral goes to. Again, make sure it's not sticking out in any way or touching any other wires and very tight. As you can see over here, you don't want these two touching, absolutely not. Once we have that, we're going to take we're going to take these two, twist them together. and connect them into our neutral coming from the heater and the cooler. Let's get unscrewed a little bit. Again, make sure they're under very tight. Okay, now that we have those connected, we will do this. We'll take the ground wire and connect it to what is coming out of the ground. Again, make sure it's tight. Okay, so what do we have here? We have connection number one power, which is the negative, the positive, the power, going to our cooler. We have number two connecting to number six. Number three going to our heater. And we have at number six going to our power and the neutral going to our power, which is at number seven. Neutrals connected to all neutrals and ground is connected to all the ground. And the temperature sensor gets connected into 4 and 5 over here. It does not matter which wire goes where as long as 1 is in 4 and 1 is in 5. And that's it. Now it should work. Now I'm going to test it and hope it doesn't explode. I'm going to pull everything back into my box. Okay, so let's connect this over to the outlet, and it turns on. So it says 14 degrees. Now, in my experience, these don't measure the exact temperature, but as long as you know what temperature really is, you can still set it. So over here in my aquarium, it says 14, but actually it's 24. So I just set it to work. I just add 10 degrees every time I look at it. And it works fine. Okay, so for the heater, we have a light bulb. 
lamp representing the heater, and for the cooler, we have a fan. And they're connected as to where it's at. So let's set this one. Right now it says 15 degrees. Now if you push the set button, it will show you the temperature that is programmed to work at. Let's change that to 18. And if you press set for 5 seconds, the menu will come up. We'll see. Um, 8C means if you're working on cooling mode or heating mode. Oh, lost it. We want it to be set for cooling mode. So, so C is cooling, H is heating. We want it to be at C. Um, C is the calibration, which means it, it changes what it says. Now, if I added 7 to it, it won't let me add any more. I wish it would, because then I might see the right temperature, but it doesn't. So that's what it is. And PT is protection. I have it set to zero. Now I have a fan here, but if you have something that's running a compressor, like a refrigerator or an air conditioner, you want to give it around five to six minutes because if they will keep coming on and off, that will it will be very bad for the compressor, will damage it. So right now we have it set for 18 degrees to cut to switch at 18 degrees, and now the temperature is 16. So let's heat up this thing, and it's getting hotter. 18. Now there is one minute of a difference. And as you can see, the light came off and the fan came on. Now if we'll cool this back down, it's now at 24. It should go down. Coming down, 22, 21, 19, and the light came back on and the fan came off, turned off. Thank you for watching. This was how to install the STC 100A.